Cool. All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, as Salar introduced me, thank you very much. I am Danny Piccioni from Penrose Studios. We are based in San Francisco, California. And Penrose is a virtual reality and AR uh, studio the, made up of some highly talented people from all sorts of industry backgrounds. Um, Penrose's mission statement is defining the next generation of human storytelling. And we do this by creating experiences which guide viewers through stories um, of exciting new methods and ways connecting the viewer with real human emotions, such as love and loss. And in virtual reality and our stories, sound plays a very big part, uh, as I'm sure most of you already know. So sound really amplifies presence in virtual reality and is a very key tool that we use for guiding attention and helping to create incredibly immersive VR experiences. Some of our previous projects at Penrose include the, the Rose and I, which originally premiered at the uh, Sundance Film Festival in 2016, and Alumet, which premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival also in 2016. Now with Alumet, we really wanted to push forward some concepts of how stories could be told in VR. Um, and to give you a little bit more of an understanding, uh, I'd like to play a short video that gives you a nice glimpse into the world that we created for Alumet. So, after Alumet comes our newest feature, Arden's Wake. Um, Arden's Wake, the prologue, uh, which we premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival a few weeks ago. Uh, and we are also showing here at World VR Forum in 2017 and are very excited about. So let me talk to you about a little bit of what it takes to create sound in VR, to integrate, and really what it takes to create a compelling um, sound experience to amplify that presence of VR. So in making sound, VR production techniques require a, a mix of different mediums from traditional film and TV, from video games, and also some from live theater. And so to give you a little bit more understanding about these, I'll go through some uh, demonstrations that I set up in um, graphs on here. So a simple explanation of film and TV would be the viewer is looking at a screen with two speakers in front of them. And film and TV is done in what we call post-production, meaning it's a linear timeline that's decided ahead of time. And in terms of sound design, you have all the time that you want to adjust the sounds to match what's going on on screen. So you can play with the timing, you can play with the volumes, you can play with the amount of sound that's coming out. The most important thing to understand about this is you have full predictability in what sound is actually coming out of these speakers that the viewer is seeing and hearing. Theater moves into the concept of spatialization a bit, which is basically the audio guidance where people typically want to look in the direction of a sound that they're hearing. It's a very natural human response. If there was a faster, large sound coming from the back of this room right now, I'm sure everyone would instantly turn around to say what's going on. So this introduces the concept of spatialization where you might want to look in a certain direction of where a sound is coming from. And next we go into video games, which gets a little bit more advanced in the way the sound works, in that games use uh, non-linear sound um, triggering methods, where rather than a fixed timeline like in films, you're actually controlling the sound based on the player's movements. 
such as um, executing moves or going into different areas and interacting with things. So from a sound design perspective, you don't really know exactly what's going to play when, but you need to prepare the sounds accordingly uh, in case there's a long period of silence or there's a lot of sounds that are happening at once from a lot of actions. So this gets a little bit tricky, but you still want to make sure at all times that the most important sounds in the experience are the ones that will be heard. Next, we further the spatialization sound a bit into 5.1 surround sound. Now, surround is very fun for the user because you're getting sounds that are behind you, the next to you, to the left, and to the right that can be moved around, um, which is a very unique experience for someone watching something like film in this case. Um, so putting these all together a bit, we get the world of VR sound, which now is a full 3D experience. It combines this location-based spatialization with um, the combination of sounds playing at once. Um, but you now add the element of the user can dictate what sounds they're hearing depending on where they might be in your experience. So a person can be in, uh, in a spatialized experience, you can be standing here and hear something and then move over maybe to see a different part of the story and you can hear a totally different set of sounds. Now to dictate this um, in sound design and virtual reality, we use something that's called sound attenuation zones, which in simple terms, it's controlling how far away you can hear certain sound effects playing from. If you want it to be very short, like if it's a character's voice, maybe I only want to hear them when I'm within a couple meters, or maybe there's a very important sound element in the story that we want the uh, viewer to be able to hear if they're possibly on the other side of the experience. So with this graph that I made, it's, it's a little simple explanation of volume and vertical and then distance horizontal. In this case, there are two attenuation uh, graphs. One is in green and one is in red. The green one would be farther away, so at 150 meters is about the distance that you would hear the last of a certain sound, where in the red graph, 50 meters would be um, the furthest distance. So you use a large combination of these attenuation zones when creating sounds and implementing them in virtual reality. So moving forward with this attenuation zones, they actually play a hand-in-hand -hand role with spatialization, which is what we talked about earlier of location-based sounds. Since you're gonna be moving around and experience in real time, you're gonna be able to move where the sounds are coming from if there's something in your experience over here, turning your head directions will leave the sound over here, but at the same time, the further away you get, maybe you're not gonna hear it anymore if you're closer or further. So, this concept um, is really the fundamental of understanding how we implement sounds in VR and how we control what you are hearing. Um, a simple example of this would also be thinking of um, yourself in a city block, like New York City, for example. You're really, in the real world, only gonna hear the sounds that are coming from within you know, 50 to 100 meters around you. Um, because of natural acoustics in real space, that's just the way that we're used to hearing um, sources that are nearby. But in New York, there are about 8 million people. So you're not obviously gonna hear these 8 million people, but in a virtual reality environment, if you had a replication of New York City with eight million people, you could actually control exactly who you want to hear and where, depending on the storytelling elements or uh, the importance of people um, at any given location. So moving on from these is uh, these features uh, comes to environment sounds, which I feel is a fundamental layer of an authentic virtual reality experience. Um, just as used in film and games and TV. Um, environment sounds are basically um, a base layer sound effect that's playing where you might not even hear it because it's so subtle sometimes, but it gives you a feeling of the environment you're in, if it's inside of a room, if it's outside, or if it's in the middle of a city, or underwater. Um, so these subtle ambiences, we also call them, um, really play a key role into uh, authentic and immersive virtual reality experience. So let me explain how we do this at Penrose. Um, We've developed a system of placing these uh, environment sounds at four points around the user in our experiences that are 90 degrees separated, so there's one in front of you, to the left, to the right, and behind you. And these completely surround the user in every part of their experience. So what happens with this is when you're starting to move your head in virtual reality, you'll these sounds are spatialized and they're staying at their location, therefore, 
you're going to be able to hear this movement when you're panning your ears between these sound sources. So this is actually pretty relevant to what we're used to in real life. But again, it's a very subtle thing that we're just used to as humans um, with hearing. And so it's not extremely noticeable. But to give you a bit of an example, I wanted to play an ambience and have, uh, do a little test so you can kind of hear where I'm coming from with this. So I'm going to play an ambience of an ocean with just some waves crashing. Pretty simple. People have heard this before, I'm sure. Let's just listen to this for a few seconds. So now, as an example of how we do our environment sounds, let's listen to the same sound, but I want everyone to just slowly turn their head from left to right and focus on the sound frequencies. And you'll notice that there's subtle changes happening when you're actually moving your head around, listening and focusing on the sound. So it's... It's not very obvious at first, but if you really focus on it, you can hear these frequency changes, which adds to this subtle realism of what we're creating with our environment sounds uh, in virtual reality. As another example of this, in our current film, Arden's Wake, there's some underwater scenes. So creating an underwater environment sound is a, a big part of the convincing element because you have these really rich and thick sound sources that are coming from all around you that really feel like you're completely surrounded by water and other elements that we're using in our storytelling. Okay, so let's move on to after we've now implemented some of these sounds in our story, there's the production process of um, creating um, a story by putting things together. Now, at some point in the production process, we're going to need to do reviews with our team, with our producers, with our um, directors especially. So this is what our previous reviews looked like in virtual reality, where the team would be gathered around the desk of um, a director or producer, and we would basically be taking notes and listening to the director give us verbal feedback while they are in the experience. And this sort of setup wasn't quite as efficient as it needed to be because we are all just staring at his computer screen, which is only showing a small fraction of what is actually um, going on and what he's seeing or he or she is seeing. So this wasn't a very efficient review process for not just sound but for animation, for effects. So we decided to put some work into coming up with a new review technique and tool and we created something that we call Maestro. So to give you an explanation of what Maestro is, I actually have a short little video demonstration um, that will give you a better understanding of exactly how this works. A lot of the magic at Penrose Studios happens from the cross-pollination of creative and technical talent. The most frustrating thing about working in this medium is not having the appropriate tools. VR is a new medium, and there aren't a lot of things specifically built for VR creation. Maestro is a tool that allows the Penrose team to collaborate inside a fully virtual space. My life before Maestro was pretty much everybody on my back here trying to watch like a little screen and sometimes it was like just too dark and people couldn't see and everybody was just like crawling on top of my screen to try to see something. Building Maestro was a really interesting experience. It was truly the synthesis of working with both the creative and engineering teams really, really effectively. As we were doing reviews in VR with the whole team in there, we would come up with new features and then test it out the next day. Using the Penrose tool suite is my lifesaver. <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to do any of the sequences without them. It turns out it's a very natural collaborative workflow that just doesn't, doesn't feel odd at all. It just feels like, why have we not been doing this the whole time? I'm really proud of our engineering team because we have people who are both really strong technically and who can collaborate really well with artists, who know how to speak to artists in a non-technical way about things that are extremely technical. As a result, we're able to build things that are really amazing. I realized that I could just like roll my chair to the side and poke the engineers and they would just like come up with such brilliant ideas. I think that what's going to drive the next wave of human engagement inside of virtual and augmented reality is social collaboration and social connection. With social VR, it doesn't matter where you are. 
you can be a thousand miles away anywhere in the world and you can still collaborate together. If I was to quantify the gains of Maestro, it's an exponential increase in our ability to execute on our goals. I'm very excited to be here working with the incredible team at Penra Studios to help define that next generation of human storytelling. So you can see that having a tool of this nature is just such a valuable resource for so many different departments, not just for me and sound, but for the animators, for the engineers, for the effects designers. Um, people can get into this space in real time and review our films and just have instant feedback and get to share this um, experience in real time. So it really makes for such a wonderful experience, as well as for me, being a sound engineer, um, I work in studios sometimes where I'm remote, and we can access Maestro from anywhere and share our space for reviews, which is a completely invaluable tool. So, um, okay, just wanted to, um, yeah, I gotta wrap it up, so thank you very much um, for the opportunity to speak. I hope you guys uh, learned a little bit about the world of sound design and virtual reality, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your experience at World VR Forum, and thanks again.